this is what I mean about this company. And like, obviously, Monty ain't talked for a while, so we, 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 this is definitely his wheelhouse of a topic. But this is what I want to segue into now. Like, for all of the fucking pity party that's going on, I have noticed that everyone who's been laid off is indispensable, super talented. They're, you know, like some of you must have been shit at your jobs, right? Some of you must, have, some of the layoffs must have actually just been dickheads who all they did was swan around the campus in a red t shirt. There must have been at least one in so, there, right? Has so, to be. Lot, but, but, but they, they, absolutely like they they are like no other company and they are fucking assholes the entire time they work and they treat everyone who doesn't work directly for the company even if you contribute positively to the ecosystem like utter shit and i've got a million anecdotes and i will tell some on this uh, uh, on this show and i will tell some i've never told before so i am not crying there is no pity party at richard lewis's house for the fucking rioters because they shit on everyone the minute that company became a major player in the industry and they were fucking enabled to do that by all the weaklings and cowards and people who just wanted to be part of the big show like the esls and all these other people like if you wonder how you get monsters in a business as pathetic as esports it's that. It, this is why you get these male executives that feel <laughs> that feel comfortable being gross about women, or, or you know, or th then lashing out when they reject their advances. More on that later. Right. This is this is how you get that. You we the the, the companies are like shit. They can take away their IP. We can't have that. And if I don't have a league broadcast, I can't sell my ads. And then I don't make money. And then maybe my company has to make layoffs. And so even the most mediocre of these people, mid-level managers, they get treated like they're celebrities. They come into the, this is every games development company. They go to the events of the people they've hired to run their esports events. They walk in a room and they go, I don't like that. I had it with Psyonix as well. Psy Psyonix chewed up a guy who had directed a Super Bowl when I was at WSOE. He directed the motherfucking Super Bowl uh, production, and they chewed him up for not telling someone to tuck, who had their shirt un untucked, tucked in. They were wearing it like the style to have it tucked like out. <clears throat> they chewed up a guy who directed a Super Bowl for not getting in that talents here and telling them to took his shirt in because they thought it looked better these people are fucking deranged across the board and riot are the most deranged <laughs> i mean Come obviously on, jump in i know i know you're gonna say one of the biggest victims of this uh, yeah i i would say that I, I think on the lec side it was mostly just kind of arbitrary uh, or they were trying to eliminate certain titles without necessarily getting rid of people. I think on the LCS side, because it was closer to the people making the laying off decisions, they definitely got rid of some bozos on the on the NA side. Not even LCS side. Let's just say on the bozos. on the on the Riot esports side in North America, I was not entirely sad to see the full contingent of people that were let go because there were some definite there were some definite bozos in that lot and i will say that you know your article where you were not mourning the loss of these jobs richard did make me i chuckle. did go a bit hard in the paint on that one i, <laughs> I read it on stream last night to, just in case some people had missed it i read it from start to finish and everyone was like damn like he was like he was listening <laughs> but there Even is Duncan, by the way message me and said that was a bit a bit, a bit strong, like, but, but I just but there, realized how much I fucking despise these people. Th yeah, but there is, there is a lot of truth to that, and it is hard. Yeah. It was hard for me working with riots when I was working with OGN, and you know, because it is such a cult, they would do things like have me work the entire world championship and then make the after party for riot employees only, so I wouldn't even get to go. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, can't imagine you that, can't have you in that room, Monty. Can't yeah, exactly. Have you in that room. What so might was... you see? What might you say? What might you tell other people? Yeah. <laughs> um, it was very fucking weird. Uh, I've never been part of any other event in the many other esports I've casted where that was the case, where you, they would actively exclude people and treat you as a lesser citizen because you were. A freelancer or you work for a different company and we're kind of, you know working this event perhaps um and you just i, I also I, just, just sorry to I, I will pile on this with you as well monty i've i've heard people who organize the right events rioters themselves who organize right events for these after these after parties 
not be allowed to attend the um, the parties that they organize themselves because they're the wrong the wrong rioters. So yeah, they're not full time. Also, by the way, I'll whatever, just right? I'll just throw this out there, right? Yeah, even though they just mean shit esports parties, you aren't making it sound great. That this sounds like you're just not getting invited to the eyes wide shot fucking party, doesn't it? Like <laughs> yeah, exactly. it just sounds a little bit too on the. And it's like oh. if you keep asking, you know that thing where the guy goes to the gate with that letter, like, stop your inquiries immediately. You will be dealt with, like, yeah, exactly. What the fuck is it? Why? Mate, you work the whole event. You can't just be at the after party yeah, having a drink. Yeah, no, it would, it, would, it would literally be, like, world final, world's finals ends. Everyone you work with goes to a party, and you're just told you're not invited. It's fucking weird. And this is what Riot's identity as a company is that they they are super cultish. They are super insular. Um and you're just on the outside looking in and they treat you like shit a lot of the time. First off, if you if you dare to make any criticism, you just get instantly blacklisted, basically. Mm -hmm. um, you know, yeah, maybe they'll continue to deign to work with you if you were popular enough like I was or I was in some ways indispensable because I had a stranglehold on the best scene in League of Legends because I was hired by an outside company to do it. So if they didn't use me, they just didn't have access to Korean League of Legends that was winning all their tournaments at the time. So I had leverage. But as you can see, guys, they invented a bunch of reasons to eventually get rid of me and it, I was very threatening to them for several reasons one of which was I was the most popular caster period so that's threatening then and I was I was not under their control I was very critical and my show yeah. summoning you insight used to criticize the game or, or, or like the balance in your casts which I've never <laughs> seen anyone else in League of Legends do in any other region yeah and 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 OGN loved that by the way I had a great relationship with OGN um, and so, you know, I would also be very critical of Riot on shows and those shows were crushing the viewership of their fully produced. Like if you guys remember primetime league summoning insight with me and Thorin was doing like quadruple their viewership on a budget of zero dollars. And they were spending all this money writing that show, producing that show, everything like that, like probably 50, 60 grand an episode. And we were just dunking all over them. So I was already a, ve a very big threat. And then I, I managed to own an LCS team. And that was just the end of it. Because like at that point in time, I had actually become a partner in, a, in their direct ecosystem. You know, I was sort of over in Korea before and like on the internet, but all of a sudden now I was also a team owner and they really didn't like that because I already had a lot of leverage. And then what I started to do, which maybe was naive and foolish of me, was at the LCS, I started to rally the other team owners to pressure Riot to make changes. And then they really didn't like that. Uh, because they had successfully divided and conquered the other owners in the past. And all of a sudden, they started receiving documents that had all the team's LCS team signatures on them. And they started to shit themselves. And so they were very, very upset uh, with all of these things. And then they found a bunch of bullshit reasons that I've proven is bullshit. Go watch my YouTube video on the Riot's Renegade investigation that I didn't do, couldn't possibly have done logically. And... Things that ha that had happened that were bad, I had no knowledge of, and people within the team were defending me that I had no knowledge of. So it was complete yep. bullshit. And, you know, this is, it, it all stemmed from the fact that I was mildly critical, but their fan base liked me, um, which made them, which rubbed them really the wrong way because I was very much liked for the criticism that I was given, which made them feel bad. And to, to the point of your article, Richard, a lot of these people were incredibly self-righteous. And because yes. what Riot does is it creates a cult, what they do, and it's very important to note, to, to talk about how Riot does this. So they actually have a brainwashing program upon entrance called denubification. That is their official name for it. They literally have full-time employees who run the denubification program, and it is to initiate you basically into riot culture. And then what happens within riot is that their campus that Fox Drop so beautifully described has all the amenities you could ever want in Los Angeles. They give you the free food, all of the free stuff. They organize the, so the social clubs. You know, they have they have various different internal groups for, uh, I you know, your personal identity, um, 
whether, you know, we've talked about the rainbow rioters that have come up recently with the, you know, Richard wrote that article about the 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 leaks about the rainbow rioters, who's the, LG, oh, yeah. the LGBTQ. Q plus group that um you know why working with saudi is good for <laughs> us gays yeah exactly well, hell, like, so, i said so, it's like trees for deforestation so, as a movement like so it's mental they create all these internal groups and because all of these amenities are on campus effectively you never leave campus when you're there they give you free food they even give you free lunch in their cafeteria by the way blizzard does the same they don't give you free lunch but they give you cheap lunch at blizzard cafeteria blizzard does the same shit mm. they uh, they run workout programs they run career development courses they run tabletop gaming nights and soon what happens when you're part of these companies is that there isn't an outside world anymore the people who are your friends work for the company. And right after you get off work, you're going to go play D&D with them in the same office. You never leave the office. There's a catered dinner sometimes, right? They have the parties that you go to. And your work and every aspect of your life, your dating life, ends up being inside the company. And so because you never leave, it is inconceivable. Like, you get so invested in the beliefs of this company and because you love every single aspect of it so much you react very viscerally when people criticize yeah. it and you can't see well, what's going on and it and it, why why people are devastated by getting laid off for riots like come on there's a million game devs out there just like fucking find another job it's not that hard um and especially because Riot is now a difficult company to get into. There is a cachet that comes from having worked with Riot. Like, I, you can find other work. You know other people who have started their own, own independent game studios who come from Riot. Anyway, it's not the point. The point is these people are devastated because their entire world gets ripped out from under them. Because yes. their social structure, their social network, the people they're dating, everything about their life has been done within the confines of Riot. And... Yep. When that is taken away, the sense of loss is it's not just a job. It's like, what the fuck am I going to do with everything about myself? So and by the way, this when, is the exact same tactic that cults use to keep you in the cult. No, but this, this, this is what I was going to say. So when I was like, all right, so I actually, they might even be behind me on that on that shelf. I've got a bunch of books written by like eminent, you know, psychologists and stuff about like, you know, cults and what they do. Right, and then because I was I was gonna write a book called The Cult of Riotology, right? But good luck pitching that one out there in the fucking to, to a publisher. I've, I've I've done it. Ah, we don't want that smoke actually legally. So <laughs> you know, fucking. Uh, why can't you just write the history of esports like a normal fucking esports person, Richard? So anyway, so here's here's how it works, right? Your, your first step is you identify a susceptible recruit and you do this by inserting someone into their lives who gets to ask them questions. Riot do this via their insane interview process, which you will have five or six interviews where they ask you abstract questions. Like f quite famously, I've said one question in one of these interviews was if you were a brick in a wall, which brick would you be and why? You know, questions that have no specific correct answers and don't talk to competence. The Riot interview doesn't care about competence. No. It cares about cultural, about cultural fit. fit. Yes. Exactly. Famously. So step two, once you've identified the susceptible cult member, you basically mm -hmm. recruit them in. You say, come in, come into, come into the cult. Then step three, and this is utterly crucial, uh, there's a process in cult, cults called love bombing, a, a love bomb. It's where everyone in the cult meets you, greets you, welcomes you. You can't believe you've never been here before. They act as a full um, support network. They overly praise your work. They tell you you're great. You know, it, it's like... you. You can't believe you're here. It's like you just feel like, oh, my God, like I'm so loved. I'm so valued. Meanwhile, the, the, the next stage is always constantly be selling the benefits of being in the cult. Always, always. And then step five, you change the identity of this person. You mm -hmm. give them a name, a new name. You break down who they were before. Obviously, in gaming spaces, we do do that. But you will see they've always got the riot in their name all of a sudden mm -hmm. when they're public facing, right? Or in their Reddit accounts or on their social media. Then comes the breakdown of the mind, the tough love. 
there's always tough love in a cult. Why you were bad and broken before and how we can heal you and make you whole if you just listen and obey. And then the next step, stage seven, guess what? Renounce your loved ones. They can't help you anymore. They've actually made you this broken, wretched creature that we're benevolently turning into the finished product of excellence. Then step eight, all of the core beliefs you used to hold are removed. And now the full, the real reason for the cult's existence, the secret truths of the universe are bestowed upon you, right? And again, think about Scientology and elevating through levels. That's how they do it. You learn more about the cult, the, the more money you pay, the longer you're there, the more, the more uh, pliable your personality is. And then step nine, you must never tolerate criticism about the cult. It is the only way to consistently show that you are loyal, right? And any criticism of the cult would bring the whole facade down if you listen to it. So you must proactively stamp it out. And you do that with step 10. You are fully only associated within the cult. You live on the cult grounds. You only talk to other cultists. You have become an island to yourself within the cult. That is the 10 stages of what cults do to people and why it's yeah. hard to pull people out and why they have to be deprogrammed. So, now, any, now, the people listening to this, does that sound at all fucking familiar? <laughs> does that sound familiar? Does that sound like your experience, ex-rioter? So, of course, <laughs> they don't fucking care about you when they cast you aside. Yeah, and and by it the is. way, by the way, Richard, I and for people who think that this is hyperbolic, like I really want to assure you that it is not. Um, it, I have worked with a lot of companies. Riot is the single strangest company I have ever encountered on this front, and it is very unlike any. If you guys say it's like, oh, it's like any tech company, it's not. It's not like other developers. I've worked with other developers. Like Blizzard's kind of like this, but people. At Blizzard, you can have adult conversations where people disagree with each other and offer criticism without going on some sort of, you know, secret shit list. Um, I've had very productive conversations at Activision Blizzard. At Riot, that was never the case. It was either you're in or you're out. There is a way of doing things. There is a secret society that decides all of these things that doesn't share them with you from the outside, that is unwilling to even explain their reasoning yeah. to other people. That was never, ever, ever, ever my experience working with Blizzard. Um, and I also, to this point, I have had tons of rioters come to me after they have left and said, you were right, it was a cult, I have now been so deprogrammed. That, I cannot believe I, I didn't see this earlier. This has happened a ton of times, a ton of times yeah. to me. Um, and it doesn't happen as much with any other company. Sometimes it happens with some other places, but Riot is the main one. And the other thing, Richard, when you hire for culture fit over competency, it's the same thing with cults. Cults don't always get the most competent individuals. What they do is they go out and they grab people who are at vulnerable stages of their life who are looking yep. for something to be a part of and to latch on to. Sometimes very smart yep. people fall into this if they've had, yep. you know, a personal tragedy recently or in a place of vulnerability. This is how you get into the into these situations. Young people and, out in the wide world and, for the and, first and, time, bright yeah. eyed, bushy tailed, just want an industry job. And I'm not saying that Riot targets people who have had personal tragedies, but what I am saying is that their process of interviewing, they're not going to ask those questions about what's gone on in these people's lives. But the people who are going to be most likely in those interviews to really push the facts that they want to be part of something, that they want to fit into Riot culture, that they are going to give the answers that the interviewers want to hear about being Riot-like – are potentially those very same people who are vulnerable to cults in the first place, right? Yep. They want to please the interviewer. Whereas, let's pretend you have you're you're a senior, you know, you're a senior software engineer. You could work at any number of companies. You've got your own family. You've got your own life. You've got your own friends. Are you just going to sit there and like simp for riot and interview? Of course, you're not. Like. Of course you're not. You you have options. So what this does is oftentimes it brings in a bunch of weirdos who don't have a lot of other options who are deemed culture fits because they are easily manipulated from people at the top of the structure to do what they want. Yeah. 
Don't. By the I'm way, gonna, what, yeah, what yeah, I was yeah. going to jump in on here is this. First of all, this is actually what you're talking about. The thing where when they're within Riot, they stupidly like identify. Look, in Riot's case, they're quite explicitly encouraging this, but they they identify with decisions and things that a Riot are doing that aren't within their purview, aren't on their payroll. Like it's not what they're doing, but they identify as though you're attacking them. Right? That's just a problem in esports in general, by the way, because I've always thought in Counter Strike, you'll you'll have had this happen, Richard, when you're not at an event and then you sit at home and as all problems might be tech delays might be the fucked up the production might might have done some like outrageous stupid thing basically when you then criticize the event you'll notice people who are your friends and colleagues yeah. who are talent if they're working the event you can tell it puts it up their back mate they get yeah. the standard end what do you we're, mean we're working and really they, hard here actually and they go out of their way yeah. like you say to make it sound like they're all part of this big group effort and you're criticising them because what they've mm. done is over identified that because they're look understandably they want the event to go awesome they want it to be great they want it to be everything because they're working on it it's what they're doing right now well that's just fucking freelancers working the event you can imagine when you're within this fucking like system we're talking about of Riot where like the joke is to even get hired you have to basically be co-signed by a billion people by the way Put, put a little pin in this. What does it imply if later on there's an enormous, pervasive, sexist culture if to even get hired you have to be co-signed by almost everyone in the company and have like a vibe check? What exactly. does that imply? What would you reverse engineer? <laughs> anyway, like I say, pull the pin out of that one. Don't worry about it. But to go back, yeah, the point is, obviously, right, this is only going to be even further exacerbated. But this is also where the cult dynamic makes it worse for them because not only are they identifying what Riot do, which is why, by the way, 99% of these dickheads were about to roast. Uh, people, me and Richard, never spoke spoke against, probably never even addressed or replied to, but these are people who did the usual thing of, like, defend Riot by attacking us or say something stupid about us or imply we're corrupt or a scumbag or not a journalist or the million other things that you can do, right? And yeah. the problem I have with that topic is... When they do get kicked out, this is why, Richard, it doesn't really feel like giving them any fucking mercy. Like, the joke is, they are the people who not only joined in, but sometimes led the witch hunts and the fucking mob behavior only. and said all the stupid shit, oftentimes completely unnecessarily. Not even when, like, like they, the joke is they are doing, like, get down, Mr. President, shit, but they're the janitor. It's like, why are you jumping in front of the bullet? You don't even get the danger money. So the worst thing to me is this. When they leave, one of the reasons why they do that really annoying born-again personality of, like, now I see the light and it was all wrong is because there's two factors here one is when you leave the other aspect of a cult is not only can't you leave because because of how hard it is but you also can't leave because now all your friends inside have to turn against you yes and when they exactly. do that you'll have seen this in every political movement people might know one of the reasons why there is no left and right in political discourse is the joke is when people get cancelled they just go to the side that isn't cancelled and set up shop there and just start the new grift and the joke is by the end it's like but wait a minute you don't really believe these things you just can't be in the old gang isn't it so it's like yeah but you've got to get a new circle of friends haven't you so they yep. go and do it and that's basically what happens so the problem to bring it back Richard because obviously I'm teeny what for this is yeah, when thanks. these people then come out like oh I see what you guys mean now I secretly liked you all along it's like you don't you twat that's just what you have to say now to have a new reality and not be completely exiled so and let's be real if you hadn't have been kicked out of that weirdo party you'd be the one handing out the pitchforks to let oh, me yeah. get fucking cancelled next week wouldn't you and it's even come better, just as, just as a detail before you guys jump in, is that this is a, there's a scare tactic that Riot uses because after you are fired or let go, you cannot come on the Riot campus for 12 months, Gonna for a full year. Up. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. that means that all of those game nights, all those people, all those times you spent hanging out at the Riot campus, you can't even be invited as a guest anymore. And of course, you know, they're going to spin this as like, oh, well, we don't want people who are maybe uh, salty that they got laid off. But this is actually terrifying for people because Riot knows that they host all of these social events constantly. And all of a sudden, if you can't go to D&D &D night at Riot's campus with your friends anymore, your friends are just going to be like, well, sorry, mate. Like, that's it. And then your yep. whole social I life goes away. It's, it, I think, mean, it, think, it's psycho. And that, that, I think that probably freaks people out that they're just not going to have access to all think, of these social activities. Think about how mental it is and how everyone just normalized this and they used Reddit and the, I mean, they also, by the way, talking about recruiting people who've got like, you know, problems and issues in their lives, obviously just co-opted a bunch of fucking mentally ill Reddit moderators to fucking censor any and all. They're still doing it, by the way. They deny to this day that they're deleting my, they delete my name and banning people for it. They deny it. They say that never happened. They just did it on the Reddit thread for that Arse Boils article where someone said, Richard, Lewis reported all of this first. Gone. It's gone. Go, go see. Those, that's what those deleted comments say. But yeah, obviously, 
per, per, perfect, perfect recruitment. But what does it say that to even go on their campus, I have to have a security check, then I have to sign an NDA that lasts three years. What, just to have a look around and see the fucking boiled eggs? Are you, are you serious? And, and, and again, they just framed that like, well, we, we're always working on projects and we've got proprietary technology and, you know, someone might look around the corner and see something we really don't want leaked. Dude, Valve don't do that. You don't have to sign a three-year NDA to go to Valve's offices. In fact, famously, Valve just invite people when they're making, like, you know, they've done it every time they made a new version of Counter-Strike. They say, oh, do you want to come out to the offices and just test it for us and share some thoughts? You know, or they come to you at an event and they show you something. Never signed an NDA. So it isn't normal. The, the, all, the, all the signs have been there that this was a, like I said, they, they've always been a cancer in the industry, a massive throbbing red tumor that nobody ever wanted to cut out because if you poke the tumor, it shits money. And, and, and we've allowed some of the worst abuses in the esports space to happen right under our nose because you don't like the messengers who are telling you that there is something wrong. That's what it all boils down to. The average esports fan has always said to me, Richard, you're biased against Riot. No, do you know what I'm biased against? I'm biased against cults that mistreat people. <laughs> I'm biased against human misery factories. I am biased against sexists. I'm biased against racists. I'm biased against homophobes. By the way, I know some stories that would make people's eyes spin like a fucking fruit yes. machine. I am talking about fake HR investigations to find out who's sleeping with who and all of this stuff, right? This is just the reality that's been there for such a fucking long time. And when people have tried to pull the alarm, everyone's going, ah, 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 hand off the money alarm. No, 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 no. And then Cecilia does it and everyone goes, wow, so stunning and brave. And what did they all fucking say? They all said the same thing. They did it with Activision Blizzard as well. They all said the same thing. And it was this, I'm, fi I'm glad that's finally out. Known about that for ages. Not one of you saw it, knew about it, and decided I'll go to one of those unpopular journalists who've actually got the spine to tell this story. And again, let's let's tell some of these stories right here and why why I'm just sat there watching all these rioters go out in. By the way, Richard, you nailed yeah. it as well. I had a similar line on somebody inside last year after all the Danny shit where I just said, when anyone says that line to me now, like, but you're just obviously biased against riot. Why the fuck aren't you is my yeah. question. What <laughs> yeah. do, do they actually, by the way, the joke with the Saudi angle is we're, we're like one step away of the fucking Kevin Costner thing now, right? They... Would they actually have to just kill people? Would you have to just see them pull up a gun and kill someone before you'd go, that might be over the line for me? Because every other line they've crossed, as far as I can tell, like, yeah. I don't know what we're waiting for to, so, for you guys to start getting biased against them. The, the, the pattern's there, isn't it? Come on. I'll, I'll, I'll start here. Uh, everyone listening, everyone who watches this on YouTube, do yourself a favour. Find one of these self-pitying rioters. And again, I'm not talking about all of them. I talk to some very fine people who have been in, who have just been caught up in circumstance and they are competent, but they're going to get another job and I think sure. they're going to be okay, right? So I'm not talking about everyone, but this applies to a particular type of rioter, right? So go and look at their accounts where they're going, ah, oh, boo-hoo, I can't believe it happened to me. Like that riot Tizer, JT Vandenbury, right? 11 years at the company and now immediately giving them smoke on social media about how terrible it is. Why? Well, can't I come back to the campus? Because you don't work there anymore, dickhead. I didn't want to go back to the fucking call center I left. What the fuck are you doing? What, why, <laughs> what? But again, it's like Monty said, this was a normal company. Your entire life wouldn't be fucking folded in it. You wouldn't think twice about going back to a former workplace, but you guys do. So do yourself an exercise, right? All the fans, all the people listening, do an advanced Twitter search, Just type advanced Twitter search into Google, and then type in, I don't know, some keywords, like type in fired or type in uh, goodbye, type in Felicia, right? Type in Carlos. Look how many of them not only gloated when people lost their jobs, but also actively pushed for that to happen. Also, look at how many of them type things like defund the police. The poli police are people. They're, they don't have families to feed. Look at all the stupid nonsense that they peddle. Go look into their political beliefs. The economy's never been better. All the people who say Trump's going to build a better economy, that's why I'm voting Biden. The economy's great. You're going to be fine then, dickhead. You'll walk into another job. Look at the rank hypocrisy all of them exhibit because they are all cardboard cutout cunts, a copy of a copy of a copy 
of a copy because you have to be to fit into the cult. So now some stories that everyone's just turned a fucking blind eye to down the years. Some you will know, some you won't. What does it say about a company that I'm meant to feel sorry for when I know there are people being fired right now that know this is true? Right, that uh, a woman who used to be hired by the company, uh, an executive said to this woman, can I have a back rub? And then when she laughed that off, they made a joke about maybe getting something a little bit extra, right? And then when that was r rebuffed, all of a sudden that executive was uh, shout, shouting, at, shouting at them for the way they dress and telling them to dial it down and remember your audience and all this stuff. Do I have to fucking dress you myself? They would scream. And this is way back in the early days of Riot. So, uh, and then went, went around actively telling everybody that that person was an emotional basket case and don't hire them and they really let the shows down, right? That went on. And I know my colleagues know this. I know people who know this for a fact that, that for rejecting sexual advances, they try to destroy this person's career. And, 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 so, and, and, and everybody went along with it because this is the other dark little aspect of it. It's not the executives that always concoct the gossip to ruin the careers of people they don't like. They're in the club now. They're in the cult now. They're at the big show. As I said, they go to the events and people roll out a red carpet for a middle tier manager with no real influence or power because they're just worried about offending rioters. So what 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 ends up happening is they start they they cozy up to you. They ask you questions. Hey Richard, you know what, what what do you think about this? And then they feed it back. They go to broadcast talent. Hey, wanna come out? Wanna have a drink? They're like James O'Keefe. They ply you with drinks, and then when you're vulnerable and you give your own opinions, they feed it up the chain of command. And then you're wondering why I don't get hired. And as Fox Drop said, you don't even get told why you don't get hired anymore. You just know you're not. And you message them, and they don't even give you a courtesy email. Your entire life is just in the fucking palm of their hand, and they will squash you for the mildest of things. Things they've done to me personally include, I was due to work a StarCraft event, many people know this, at IEM San Jose, I had recently had an issue with Riot uh, over a publishing of a story they did not like. A story where when I asked them for comment, they scooped me themselves rather than play ball with a journalist. So they told ESL, who were running an Activision Blizzard event, if I was in the building, if I was hired to work that event, they would pull their entire League of Legends sponsorship. So ES, and, and they wouldn't be allowed to do IEMs anymore. So ESL agreed, because the stakes were so high, and paid me to not work an Activision Blizzard event. Everyone goes along with it because it's Riot Games. So they've done that. I won't even get in to the mechanism through which via Reddit they have s just censored me. I also won't get into how there are two people that were very cozy with those Reddit moderators that were back channeling private information and monitoring my social media and giving it to them. And they were factoring it into this big intelligence discussion about what must be done about Richard Lewis, right? Now, 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 now here's, here's some other little fucking gems. They, they have ha actually actively blacklisted so many journalists down the years. I'm not just talking about the ones you've heard of. I'm talking about ones you probably haven't heard of, right? Uh, f for literal criticism of their games. Meanwhile, they have also given jobs to people in the games industry who mysteriously, mysteriously have just fucking given their games good reviews. So the I'll give you the famous example. IGN is obviously one of the biggest sites online for reviews, especially 10 years ago, 15 years ago. And famously, a woman wrote for IGN, gave League of Legends a 9.2 out of 10 rating. And then mysteriously, I think like a year later or something, was just working for LOL Esports. By the way, <laughs> that was that was a re-review of the game. They actually gave it a very poor... Yes. They gave it a very it poor was additional shit, enough. Yes. Uh, rating, yeah. and then they re-reviewed it, gave it a high rating, yes. and uh, yes. And by the way, Richard, I mean, here's- It's a, had the whole vibe, by the way, of like, oh, I work for the government overseeing this like financial area here. We have to put in, we have to remove some safeguards and allow some healthy economic growth next year. What's that? I now work for Goldman Sachs. Brilliant. Glad I put in those removal things. It's one of those ones where it's like, mate, you're not even fucking hiding it. You're making it so, up to all the nose. I, I mean, here's here's a fun one from that- it's it's not something that happened to me. It's something that happened to my wife. 
which is that she was working for Twitch and Jacob Wolf came out with reports that the Rocks Tigers were breaking up yep. at the end of uh, 2016 Worlds. Remember, this was a Worlds that I wasn't at because I had gotten into the fight with Riot and I was not invited to Worlds in 2016 and nor would I have done it because I was doing like Overwatch World Cup and shit like that. Um, but anyway, I wasn't there. My wife was not there. And yet they thought without any evidence that my wife was the source for Jacob Wolf for this story because she was close to the Rocks Tigers team. She was not the source. She disagreed with Jason, Jacob Wolf's article and they went to Twitch. They went to her employer and tried to get her fired because this is how this is how they behave when they are part of Riot and they have this kind of mm -hmm. power is they try yep. and leverage their shitty power to get other people to do things and to ruin other people's careers, regardless of whether there is evidence. They tried to do it to me. Luckily, I'm the cockroach you can't kill, so I'm still around, but, you know, a lot of other people didn't survive this being done yeah. to them. Like, what you're not hearing, guys, is all of the stories of people who had this done to them unjustly and without evidence and without them even doing anything, but because these people were rioters, even if they were low-level ones, they could basically just bark up the chain and then get it into somebody's head, and then the cult just moves into action to defend itself. I mean, what they did to people's careers at Twitch, and again, remember, this is why I can't shed any tears, because they were actively, they actively destroyed people's careers, just for kudos, right? Like, just, just to get some faint praise from fucking Reddit. By the way, I hilariously age bad, them, remember them light smites? Total data protection violation, although probably in the TOS you've signed something away. He used to just come out and people would be like, I got banned and I did nothing. And then Riot Light, with the third most important person at the company, he's got the time as it you come and post your chat logs on reddit and say this is why i banned you and no one has any issues with this everyone yes slay let me tell let me remind people about what they did to a streamer called N nicole slaw right nicole slaw was a um a, a streamer that used to play she used to play league of legends and then one evening because she had a cat that was like part of the stream called minu she put she put it on her lap and minu just had a freak out and was like clawing at her so she like held it down that blew up on the front page of Reddit because they will never miss an opportunity to destroy a woman's life. I do notice you fucking incels, right? That blew up on the front page of Reddit and was and the, the moderators allowed it again. And it was framed as why is this League of Legends streamer strangling her cat? Go again, go look at these threads and then look at the video footage. It is the most uncharitable representation I have ever seen of something you can see with your own eyes, right? She definitely did not strangle a cat. She held it down. You may make an argument that she handled it roughly. She didn't mistreat it. She didn't strangle it. She didn't hurt it. Within minutes, there was a rioter in that thread saying, I am going to speak to people at Twitch and pull some strings. And pull some strings they did. They went to that company. And again, with all their leverage and all their power, she was banned for a fucking year. For a year. Which is hilarious, considering now Twitch will literally let you gape your own arsehole on stream in a non-age-gated broadcast. And you get three days. Right? So her career in the fucking toilet, because a rioter wanted a fucking attaboy. Right? I hope you're one of the cunts that got fired. As I said about Dunk when he got fired, I hope you're on the fucking streets and you're having to live off handouts, right? And your kids are looking at you going, why are you less of a man and can't provide for us? And they fucking hate you. I hope that's your reality. Because you would do that to other people at the drop of a hat because you wear a red fucking T-shirt. Let's also talk about just how they stymied and stifled Tyler Wan's career. You might not like him. You might hate him. Whatever. But they literally have said publicly, and I know privately, because I talk to everyone at all levels in the industry. We they wanted Twitch to de-index Tyler One. So when you clicked on the League of Legends thing, he wasn't like there. He didn't show up, no matter how many people were viewing. Quote, we cannot have Tyler One be the face of League of Legends. And then hilariously, after Sanjuro, another rioter who's now fired, enjoy the breadline, motherfucker, right? Said, I hope he gets testicular cancer from all the imaginary steroids he's popping right, in public, right, after that, they sort of said, we look like the baddies here, let's extend an olive branch, this company is fucking sick, they are sick, they have, and, and they have done terrible things with impunity to people for decades, and as I said, it's not just the executives doing these things, it is the middle managers, it is the rank and file, just another thing as well, 
this is this is this will blow your mind. Can you imagine what has to be going through your mind to create a fucking visual web of who is sleeping with who in esports? Can you imagine sitting down and drawing up that project and then making hires based on who you think might As be a As if it was like one of those boards in the yeah. movies where they get oh, the mafia yeah. and they have all the recall connection or whatever. They have that fudge people sleeping with each other. Fucking hell. I mean, there was also, quite tragically, that suicide riot. Oh, no yes. One, no, yep. no, one, no one even talks about that anymore. But as I said, even right now, they're doing the same shit in Valorant. They're having a clean out of like legendary broadcast talent based on, oh, they're too popular. They're too big for the boots. Let's break that group apart. They are literally throwing a bag of money into a ring and making the fucking uh, uh, outside broadcast talent they hire in Valorant fight each other for it while they write down notes about who showed the most loyalty to Riot, who was willing to go far enough, who was willing to do disgusting reprehensible things to their colleagues just to get this job who wants it these people are fucking evil man like i i can't I, I could go another five hours i won't it makes me sick to my stomach what this company has done to so many of my friends so many of my colleagues even total strangers that i just i've watched from afar have these awful things done done to and said about and it's the tip of the iceberg. You thought you cleaned them all out with that $100 million lawsuit? Not even fucking close, guys. Not even close. And by the way, what does it say now? Right? Oh, they've totally changed, guys. Look, they've set up a coding for women group and paid $100 million. They fought tooth and nail to not pay a penny. They hired a union-busting law firm to basically harass and intimidate the complainants and then settled for, after they offered $10 million, then settled for 100 And then, on top of this, they're now doing these layoffs. And what are we learning about with the LEC and other parts of the company? People are doing multiple jobs. Their bonuses are being wielded like a cudgel when they live in the most expensive city in the world and every fucking penny counts. Right, and that's what they're doing to just uh, that's what they're doing to the people who get to stay. And everyone's telling me they've changed. No, guys, no, no, no. If you stand with this company, it's going to bite you eventually. Your conscience will get to you eventually. This company is rotten to the core. It is the worst company I've ever seen across the entirety of video games. And Activision Blizzard have really gone some <laughs> to fucking beat it. They really tried Core I've to been, Gear Activision I've Blizzard. been inside both companies, guys, and I agree with Richard. <laughs> you know, I've seen both so, sides. Just so just just to put a pin in it to all my freelancers. I know you like the games I know you want to be part of the show I know you just want to turn up and talk about something you're passionate about Getting into bed with riot is getting into bed with the devil They do not respect you and there is a very heavy price to pay at the end of the transactional experience And and you and you will agree with this and they're doing it as I said, they're still doing it They're doing it right now. They're doing it to talent right now right now I mean, I, I don't even want to talk about the quick shot thing. How are you going to yeah. cast him off like he's nothing? He doesn't get a second chance. No one want to fight for him. What about no Dash? one? What about Dash? Exactly. I mean, bro, like, don't. I'm, I'm fucking agitated. I'm getting indigestion. I it mean, think, think about Dash, dude. Me. There was not even an event with Dash. It was just he's gone forever. He knew his value, which proved the programming wasn't working. Mm -hmm. That's why he went. I, like seriously, I, I, you know, I, I wish, I wish we could have all collectively, like, ha, you know, got these things out there sooner. Because now, unfortunately, the average esports fan they don't care. They don't care. They're not. They're not. E they're not even Zoomers. I'm not even going to put it on a generation uh, of apathy because I, I'm fucking Gen X, so we're the most apathetic Doomer generation of all time. Right, but I'm not. So I'm not going to put it on you. The problem is they just don't care. That it's not important to them. They want their weekly fireworks display, the shooty shooty bang bang, or the big ult. You know, tons of damage. They just want that. 
And they don't care how that sausage gets made. They just want the slop served up to them. And any ethical stance or educating yourself about riots history or all the periphery stuff, it doesn't matter to them. It doesn't matter that someone they profess to love and be a fan of might be secretly being worked unbelievably hard behind the scenes. Might be, as Foxdrop said, you know, having panic attacks and then somehow, what, that's, that, that's your bad, is it? That's your bad, a mental health crisis that we pretended that we really totally care about, but now now you're never being hired again. Yeah, you're too unreliable. Who knows what else he might do? Oh, he talked to Rich's wrath. He talked to Thorin. You, why you wouldn't care about that as a fan is beyond me, but it just shows what we've got in esports. It's the fundamental problem. It starts with the fan base, all the problems. They do not care. You cannot make them care. Uh, so what are we all doing here? What even is the point of being an advocate for, for, for these people going through this shit? So no, as I said, all those rioters that have participated in that, knew about it, remained silent about it. You deserve to be on the breadline. That is before we even get to. I guarantee you all whooped and hollered as Carlos lost everything. A little bit of the context about Carlos's life, right? Obviously, he'd gone through a really bad breakup. I'd even yep. go so far as to say he was vulnerable, and that's why he was leading into the Manosphere stuff. And then suddenly, he's having his pictures taken with Andrew Tate. Spoiler, I bet Andrew Tate doesn't even know who Carlos is. He's saying some crazy shit out there now and it breaks my heart to see him go to the dark side like that but i know there is light in the man and he will come back to the light one day he will regret this period this reeks to me of him having a crisis of his own what did you all do you took you took everything away from him over an errant video you took it all. I'd you even say the they did it with relish, dude. They yes, sort of like loved completely. that they were destroying his life. It wasn't even treated as like, like, here's the thing. At least if you were treating it as a punishment, you'd do it like a, like a, a, like a good parent back in the day, which is even if they had to like discipline you, you, they'd make it clear they didn't want to, that they knew this just had to be done. This was like, if someone was loving that they were beating you and just relishing it, like, ah, it's brilliant, isn't it? The way I just get to destroy your whole life and everything you built means nothing. Like, what do you expect's going to happen at that point in time? Yeah, I agree with you. So, uh, you know, enough, enough with the pity party, enough with the maudlin bullshit. You know, it's, it, it's incredible how you will give yourself a pass for working at that company for as long as many of you did. And I'll also just add, and we can now segue out to a much more lighter topic. I'll also add, I don't have sympathy either for people that took jobs in a clear boom time in the industry due to a global fucking pandemic. Remember how we were all told, if you go outside, you're killing grandma. If you don't wear a mask and fucking give fights, uh, you know, bodily autonomy over you, you are human scum and you don't deserve to be able to work in the industry and none of us could even say to the contrary i don't think it's a good thing actually that the state gets to mandate what type of medical procedure you know i remember the fucking aids crisis and some of the outrageous things the british and american government did to people who were suffering from a disease through no fault of their own you know remember it was only in obama era people with hiv were allowed to enter America. So no, I don't like the government knowing about my medical shit. And I don't like the government man. If you said that, you were scum, right? So all of, so these people, they were one of the few, one of the lucky few, right? Who for them, the pandemic was a good thing. Oh wow, they're hiring thousands of people. And you went and you took that job and you took it as a contractor in many cases. Did you really think it was gonna last forever? How naive can you be? At some point you have to say you know, you're an adult. If you make bad choices, then bad things eventually happen in your future. So a lot of them as well were incredibly lucky when a lot of us were incredibly not lucky and we were on our knees financially and they got the swanky job and got to move to L.A. Now, yes, the managers that overhired in that time should have been fired. They've mismanaged resources. They fucked it up. But you going, that was inevitable. It was never going to last. But nobody goes in, nobody joins the cult thinking they'll ever get called. That they'll only be there for a year. So listen, across the board, just a lack of fucks for the for the crying rioter. To see more cool, funny, interesting clips based on topics from my content, well, subscribe to this channel then, or you know, be a pleb and don't.